All right, episode 45, we're going to do a systems breakdown. Do you get confused like we do when it comes to building systems and how to effective, effectively use them to scale in your business? We're going to break down our systems right now. Welcome to the only real estate podcast worth listening to with your hosts, Nick Good, Matt Kelderman, and Brian Force. Combined, they have 26 years of experience and have sold over 1,500 homes. Join them each week as they bring you everything you need to know about real estate. And now, here are your hosts, Nick, Matt, and Brian. Missed our song. Let it roll, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All that goes is like old key change there. I, I never I, even heard before. Got that deep in wow. There. My favorite was when I uh, played uh, the wrong side of the song once, and no. you guys didn't even know it was the same one. Yeah. <laughs> no that was weird. That was weird. That was almost like when you hear the second verse of the intro from Friends. You're just like, this is a real song? I know there's a whole other part to this. I wouldn't even know. Because I'm trying to think of what to say right now. <laughs> it's been three weeks. It's been a while, dude. Yeah, I, yeah. I know Aaron Foster made a joke. It's like, is this show still going? Is it on the show? Which, by the way, if you if you like this show and you see people like asking about it, go ahead and share it with your friends, please. We tagged ourselves today, and we had the exact opposite. You know, Mr. Aaron Foster, he won't show his face on Facebook. He's always got like weird like <laughs> show your filters. Face. Who's got their sound turned up? Is that me? It's not me. No, it's one hundred percent me. I got my headphones. I can hear myself, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> You're like, a little too you're, much time you're like off. a caller to a radio show who's still got his radio going <laughs> yeah. on in the background. Sir, could you please turn your radio <laughs> down? I'd just like to say that Jason Garrett should be fired. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy echo. Just, yeah. Uh, Shout out to Mike Reiner, local radio hero. Yeah. Retiring. Oh, man. I thought that was a joke, right? So I thought I heard them go in there. That's the uh, uh, sports radio station, 1310 The Ticket. Yeah. I, I thought it was a complete joke. I was like, all right, they're coming back, yeah. and they had they had the entire the morning crew in there. And I'm like, all right, where's the punchline? Right, and it just never came. No, nope. nope. it's crazy. Like, you, I mean, I'm glad to see that because usually, like, long time radio gigs, they don't end well. No, you those know? dudes don't usually quit their job. They don't, yeah, it's usually, usually bitter. It's gonna be like this podcast. We're gonna do this until I hate you. <laughs> and I'm never We're gonna, gonna break up like the Beatles. Never gonna talk again. Yeah, we'll go do our own podcast till I sue you for royalties. We have seven more episodes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How was the uh, break? It was good, man. Yeah. What'd you guys do? I did a whole lot of. <laughs> I'll be honest, nothing changed. I was in the office like every day. <laughs> we rearranged our office. Oh, very nice. Stole a conference table. Now it's in our office. We set up our own podcast studio in there. We just BS around about stuff, but yeah, that was the big. That was our big Christmas present to ourselves. I got a Nutra Bullet. Yeah, I've been drinking a ton of spinach. <laughs> How's that been going? It's actually all right. I've been using it every day. I feel great. Do you? Yeah. Got my first B12 shot today. I'm just like, dude, New Year, new me. Do, yeah. <laughs> do you, ju- you just do? Is it just spinach? No, there's all kinds of shit. There. Oh, the first say. one I made was terrible, dude. I was yeah. just like threw all these things in there, and it did not come out well. Dude, you can get like pretty ten dollars like, worth of fruit. My wife has got it pretty dialed in. She makes this consistent. Like it's got carrot juice, a little bit of citrus, like a bunch of good veggies and stuff, and it tastes real good. But she's actually made stuff for both of us before that, like when she was early on in her juicing career, that you and I were both in the office. Plug like, your nose and chug it. Oh, dude, you went. I remember one day you went and threw up a bunch of beet juice. She was, was like, a, she came to the office. She's like, I ran out. Of everything but beets, and I was like, "Oh God!" It was like <laughs> drinking purple paint, and it tasted like the earth. The face was terrible. It was so it was like salty dirt. It was <laughs> awful. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. well, I just went to New York. Did yeah, that's you? all. That's just it. like the coolest place to go during the holiday Heck season yeah, at all. Man. Though I like to go where places where it snows. Sure, sure. But I have the luck that it's the, always the hottest. Doesn't matter. Like that year. It could be the coldest day before. If I'm showing up that day, it's going to be the warmest week <laughs> on record. No snow, right? Boo. New York during the holidays needs snow. It goes I, out to the to the my mental like imagery of it for sure. Oh, for sure. I always try to find. I tell myself every year I'm going to do this. I'm like, I'm going to find like a desolate cabin somewhere. I'm just going to unplug for like two weeks and in the snow and just I'm gonna like he man it in the mountains and then I try to find it online like where I should travel <laughs> to and then I'm like wait like what I'm looking for probably isn't online because like that's the whole point so I found a bunch of tree house cabins you can stay in here locally like really? within like between here and Austin like there's like eight really? of them dude I see those yeah. on Airbnb and it makes me so nervous because I'm like when you rent a building there's codes and stuff like 
Who from Airbnb is vetting these tree houses? Not a single person. Are they person. sending out a representative? No, it's no. got to be. There's I no way, be. dude. Be. Nobody's traveling. There's a tree house Maybe? inspector. Got to be. <laughs> tree house inspector. Got like, hey, everybody, tag your favorite tree house inspector please. from your local yeah. market. Honestly, the really comment, and if you know what that process looks like, please tell me because yeah. I am positive we're going to hear all over the news one day of a tree house death from Airbnb <laughs> where you just fell 40 feet out of a tree because it's just so jankly put together and Airbnb is like, we'll, we'll post it. Okay. <laughs> 60 bucks is 60 bucks. All right. So I want to know. Hold on. Okay. Uh-oh. we got to get back to the, the rhythm of this. Ooh. Okay. So if this is one of your first time listening. Yes. Right. And you have not joined the only real estate group worth being a part of. Mm-hmm. Go do that. Go find that on Facebook right now. We're, that thing is taking off. Yeah. Other than some spam, like we're getting some people posting some spam shit in there. We're potentially looking for some moderators. stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. We like, really need to moderate our own group better, and I'm the worst offender. Yes, yeah, so I'm the one who deletes all it, and I make sure that I let people know. It says, do you share the spam? Like, I share those notes with those people because yep. it pisses me off every freaking time. It <laughs> literally says that in the in group. The thing. Do not share listings or the other crap that you're sharing in there. Let's ask good engagement questions. It's a national it's just, group, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to post your listings. It's so great, though, because the differences in our personalities once again is so evidently on display these guys are just indignant <laughs> that you would accidentally post your open house it's there. not accidental these and people are doing it over and over and over and, again. and, and the, it's in the rules of the beginning i'm like i'm kind of an admin in this group and i don't know what the rules <laughs> are i know what not to do because i'm in a bunch of other groups right. <laughs> and then if um if you listen to this on itunes please leave us a review please yeah. our reviews are taking off on that did we and bring then, one in did you a bring re- it in? A review? Ooh. No, not a review. Dude. A I review. know, I know what you're. Yeah, yeah. It's a Ooh, review. Guess what? Bag. Guess what we so did. So if if you're w- listening to this on iTunes, you'll yeah. want to go to the only real estate podcast worth listening to, the our our page on Facebook, so you can watch the video. But we were featured yeah. in a January issue right here of Real Producers North Texas Magazine. It was pretty cool because it was my first, like view into what it goes into an actual magazine shoot cover or magazine magazine cover shoot and like turns out it's just like you and a dude taking pictures kind of all over the place and then you just kind of make up stuff like that cool picture where we're jumping out from behind the tree and nick standing there like our dad like (laughs) we super just made that up on the spot we're like what are some other goofy things we could do and one of those pictures made it on the cover it's awesome i I, I wouldn't and there's video of it too the video of it's killer as well yeah Yeah. either way man like this is straight up for the podcast like this isn't about our i mean our real estate business is just solid too like whatever but the whole article is based on the fact that like we are competitors by business definitions mm-hmm. and friends because we're gonna go have sushi later oh, lovers <laughs> yes <'Cause I'm, laughs> i hate sushi <laughs> yeah nick obviously wants to hang Just out with us because he doesn't want to do that at all for us. and and th- that's what the whole podcasting about plus we're proud of it too because this started in a garage and yeah yeah now we're here started with a lot of drinking in a yeah. garage and then if you want to take more yeah. listings like we all do mm-hmm. you need to go sign up for our webinar taking at a bunch this tour week. academy.com backslash take 10 t-e-n t-e-n watch the webinar and then you'll be prompted and asked and you'll graciously do so yep you're going to sign up for tour academy for one dollar one go do it we just had um our back to from the holiday break we just had our tour academy zoom mastermind call that we do twice a month um and you know, we had Harvey was on there. Harvey yeah. was on. Kristen Harvey was Kristen on. was on. Yep. And I know that. I mean, that was talking. Honestly, that's more mastermind style where we're, we're riffing. Yep. And it's talking. It gets a little bit into our personal lives and how we're running our our own our own lives, like from a, a P and L. Yeah. Right. So we're talking about that. How we should be reviewing our our P and Ls and our businesses and, and yeah. reviewing our systems and breaking those down and figuring out. Are the systems that we have right now going to get us where where we need to be? Yep. Where we want to go. We definitely dive a lot deeper on the Austin Nines for sure, but that's what we're going to jump off on today. And, like, that's really where I start. It's like, oh, my gosh, like, are our systems going to get us to where we want to go? We have, like, Matt and I have experienced tremendous growth in our business just since we started that po- our, this podcast, right? Oh, yeah. And heavens have we had to do some some renovations or retrofit whatever you want to call it revamping i think is the best word of our systems because man as you grow you start to realize the limitations of what you're currently doing 
And I think if you're not, if you're not two things, if you're not forward thinking about like the innovation in the industry, then you're going to fall behind with your systems a little bit. And then two, if you're not, if you have aspirations to, to really scale your business to a massive level, like you've got to start to really think about like what goes into running your current systems and how you're going to grow them. You know, I think what, what I've noticed we've experienced is we've like inward, like outward pushing pressure on the business, right? Most of the stuff that we're experiencing in our system growth right now is coming from bringing on agents, trying to get them up and running. We've had, we're, we're finally to the space and I've heard Nick say it and, and I'm not ashamed to admit this now specifically because it's different, but when, when I was running the team by myself in this iteration and previous ones, I'd hear Nick be like, yeah, we got some agent on, you know, he's got four things under contract in the first like 45 days. And I'm like, what in the hell? I know I've had people six months who haven't done anything, right? Like, and, and now having a business where we are experiencing that, right? Like we got Sid who comes in and puts on four and we got Vanessa who's Dude, crushing it right now. Got, yeah. we, our lead flow is at a space where I've never felt it before. It's like, but it's also, I've never experienced a business running like this, right? Like yeah. there's tons of pendings going on the board that aren't, that the main producers aren't responsible for. It's just trying to turn into this weird machine that just goes. It just like, goes. And we get to a space where we can really start to just, inf- like that's the thing is when you can build systems that start to run themselves a little bit, like then you really get to shine because I think the things that we bring to our team the best outside of all the resources and opportunities and things like that, it's just like, we get to really spend a lot of time every day coaching and advising and mentoring. Like we probably spend, and it's not even structured usually, like we probably spend a few hours every day in the office having one-on-one individual conversations with our business partners, helping them through transactions, helping them through certain you know situations, That's helping right. them with their lead gen, helping them with this. And like when you're really bogged down with your own shit, you don't get to do that as much. And I think is, is producing agents that's the biggest thing we can offer the team. It's the hardest thing to explain from a value perspective to yeah. a new agent. It's probably something that, as as Brian said it the other day, an agent starts to get a little bit of hubris in their business. When they've been on a team, they think they can go replicate it on their own. But I legitimately yesterday closed the worst transaction of my entire life. Okay. It was the worst one. <laughs> and I had an opportunity to share it with the team. And it, the only reason it stayed together was because I had been in other transactions of varying levels of difficulty that gave me enough knowledge to keep that one together and then incompetence on the other side as well (laughs) but either way like those are the types of things that we owe the agents on our team um i think when they sign up and want a real mentorship or the people from tour academy more specifically when they're local you know brian some some up important the other day like having a local mentor is hugely important i really think especially in real estate yeah I think that the businesses are very, very market specific and there's a lot of stuff that works everywhere. But I think if you're on a team, like your, your, your people right there are going to be your biggest asset. Rosen's got a question. I'm gonna let you guys answer this. What are your top two system recommend one or two system recommendations before we go down that, that, because I saw that, and, yeah. and first of all, I love what Joe does, right? I do. Dude. I mean, Joe is, about his energy dude, the video, content dude. that dude puts out. How much B12 is he taking? <laughs> <laughs> because, Answer that, Joe. Holy <laughs> shit, man. That, that dude is the, the Joe Rosen show. I mean, he's putting out content like no other. Yeah, and he's dude. gotten so much better, right? So your, your stuff, you're killing it with it. But let's go down the definition. What, Brian... You're even more systematic than I am. What sure. is the, what would you define as a system, right? Because we hear, we need systems, we need systems, right, we need right. systems. What does that mean? A, a system, uh, here's the thing, and that's I think about this all the time. It's such a good a good question because people just like, it's such a weird buzzword that we use. We're just like, we've got to have systems, you know? And it's like, like, I know what I'm talking about, but then also like, we also just throw that word around. Like, I, I, sort of, I don't understand other people's systems. So it's like, um, I, I define a system as any predetermined set of events that you can have that 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 lead to a predictable outcome right and then and that's what a system looks like and then leverage and automation is what makes your system scalable right for example if i'm stuffing envelopes right i'm like printing my letters i'm stuffing the envelopes i'm putting the stamp on them and i'm licking them and closing them that's a system. I'm doing the same repetitive series of events with a predictable outcome over and over and over again, right? But I'm just one person. So, like, if I'm writing the letters, now my printer is my first piece of leverage, right? Or maybe I get one of those automatic envelope sealers and I throw them into there. And then maybe I get somebody to go do the stamps and lick and close them shut for 
10 bucks an hour or something like that. Now I've got leverage, right? I've got automation and I've got leverage. So a system is any set of events, right? A predetermined series or set of events and tools that you put together. I would say, yeah, it's a set. A system is a set of tools that you use to put together a predetermined set of events that you have that have that lead to a predictable outcome. And then automation and leverage are what help your systems run uh, at scale and continue to grow. If that makes sense. Yes. I think of it as of, of something that is plug and play that that you can you can put anybody in it and the same outcome will happen over and over and over again. Sure. But just but isn't that like an impossible piece of criteria to hold anything to? With no. a lot of things it is, but that's where like you know, I mean that's where automation comes in and that's where things are getting a little bit yeah. more. Would you say if you go to McDonald's? Yeah. Do you expect that the is would it be difficult that the hamburger <laughs> Or the French fries are going to taste different. Would, is it difficult to get the same taste at from from the local location, and then you go to New York and it tastes the same, right? right. That that's a system and a process right. in yep. there, right? And and the same thing can happen with your real estate business. It's just figuring out how do you want. First of all, what are you going to put in place? Are you going to hold yourself accountable to that system? Most systems break down because the the user side skirts it or doesn't use it at all yeah. i think the product you're selling matters too like when we're talking about a burger or something right like no but there's 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 a relationship involved in what we do and yep. i think that's the part of it where it starts to break down right it's the human element is it's not that you can't systematize it sure now you hand this system over to an agent who has to determine what to say at the right time how many times to follow up yeah. do i call or text now was that guy really pissed off last time right like all those things and that's where all of this just well, that's what it, so, and that's being really smart about what you're systematizing in your business. Huge in our business, we systematize two things opportunity and service. What I mean by that is that we don't systematize f like follow up, we don't systematize talent and skill sets, right? Like, we systematize lead generation, right, in a way that we always have consistent lead flow all the time, and then we systemize uh, we systematize service by finding and nurturing and training talented people who provide a set of tasks over and over and over throughout the transaction process that create the same level of service for every single client over and yep. over and over and over. Just like you can expect at McDonald's, right? Like you don't have to be the most talented person in McDonald's to work there and provide great service because you only you have a very small set of tasks and like a transaction for a cheeseburger is a little bit different than a transaction for a house, right? So you do need some talented people in those uh, those transaction coordinator and, and, and listing coordinator and admin roles, right? But that's what that's what we do in our business with systems. We provide opportunity for our agents in the form of marketing and lead flow and, and all the automation and just systems with big models and big systems that we have that generate a ton of opportunity and leads for our agents. Um, and then we systematize service a little bit by having talented people that create those systems that give people the but, same experience but the people, over and over. So regardless of what we're talking about, re real estate or the burger business, right? People still, like Joe just mentioned, you know, great point, Matt. You know, the relationships are, is what can yeah. make it challenge to, to systematize, right? But when you have someone order something at a restaurant, it, it, it could be like, no, I didn't say that. Well, no, you did. And then and they could get heated, throw the burger in your face, and you're starting to fight. And it's, it's, you have to have the people kind of figure out how to, how to keep it organized. The same thing in a transaction. You had a shitty one, the worst one you've experienced in a sure. while. But you, you, still had, you still could rely on the systems in place to know where it was throughout the process. 100%. You were trying to diffuse and, and make sure that it still, you helped guide it along that, that path. I yeah. would say the systems and the talent behind the system, specifically Lady, our ops coordinator, who pretty much does everything, takes so much off my plate that allows me to double down on my efforts to sure. solving the problems that were presented in this time. Dude, I had to, a lender quit the day of closing. <laughs> the lender sent an email and said, I can't close this deal, I'm out. <laughs> and then stopped responding to people. And that was 60 days ago. That's so weird. <laughs> it just closed yesterday, right? So like, see ya. <laughs> it's because we have systems and an amazing piece of leverage in, in Lady specifically. Yeah. To, that, that whole thing was possible in the but, first place. You're absolutely right. But the system also, Lady is amazing. Yep. But the systems are designed also if Lady were to get mad at Brian and say, fuck it, I'm out. Just Somebody like lender, should be able to slide in. Someone should be able to slide in and, and be able to at least guide it along that process with with little with with little guidance because the system's already in place that's, that's where, the goal we yeah. are not there yet but that's where talent and systems combine to create excellent service right so for example like 
most of the systems that we have that kept this thing moving forward, even through all the obstacles, were created by our talented ops director, right? Yep. Like, we went out of our way to hire somebody who was an escrow officer for years to be our transaction coordinator because we knew that they would be, that's the, that's the skill set you need, yep. right, to be a really great transaction coordinator or ops director, right? And then she goes and with every transaction learns a little bit more than uses our softwares, our systems, the things that he keep her on, on track. Like literally whenever something goes under contract, she applies an action plan and 115 things pop up that need to happen in between now and the next 30 days, right? And of those 150 things or 15 things, they probably grew from 50. Yep. Yep. But then along the way, like, I oh, need fucking remember to do that next yeah, time. Right. You know whole... what I mean? Like, that's where a talented person goes and continues to build systems that scale to the point where now we're getting closer to a point where we can bring on another ops director for our second location. It's you know, or, or, or our, our third or fourth or fifth or sixth location. And she can train them even if she, they're not as inherently talented as her. You've talked about this before, right? Yep. Like your 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 back your back of house talent has been with you for a long time, right? right? Yep. If if they were to ever leave, or you were just to upgrade, move them into a different position, have to replace them, there'd be nuance that would change dramatically. That you guys have to adjust. But, to. And this is where this is where, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna categorize myself with the majority. My systems are reliant on people, sure. yeah. not reliant on the system itself, right? Mm -hmm. That's where the fault lies, sure. right? So if that person were to move up or were to say, screw it, I want to do something else, right. absolutely we would have that pain point, mm -hmm. right? So most people, that, that is the problem. Yep. We are like, you know, for lack of a better term, we're lazy in that sense of not wanting to go and put that in place yep. because right now we have an amazing person in that role. Yep. Something happened. He's happens. about to come in on Monday and ask for a raise. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Nick just said yeah. he couldn't live without. I it. do. I do think there's just the 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 wires of life getting intertwined. That there is just certain stuff that you'll never be able to replace about a person. You know what I mean? There are certain things that people do intuitively there's in their nuance business. To everything. There's so much nuance, and we use the word nimble in our office all the time, like in in relation to the conversations. But I think if for systems and the person doing those, it's it's much more nuanced than that. Like, sure. lady recognizes a lot of things that could break before they break because she's been down the road right. hundreds yeah. of times, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's the hardest thing. to But replicate. that's the talent in the person also then perfect, you know, improving the systems. Yeah, right. So I'm reading a book. I'm I'm, I'm not going to like explain it all the way just because I'm not that far in. I'm 25 pages in, but it's it's predictable revenue, right? And okay, the, yeah, yeah. So have you read that book? No, no, no. no I, know, a, I know the book. So though. far, 25 pages. It's amazing. It's the person who 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 built out this Salesforce.com mm -hmm. sales team, right? And and from the 25 pages that I'm in already, talks about building a system that you can plug in anybody off the street saying saying let's say you're you're bringing in someone at salesforce they knew that they could bring in a hundred thousand dollar a year sales rep they knew that plugging that person in would generate three million dollars a year in revenue right now i can tell you from all of us here we don't have it down yet no of plugging oh. an agent in of how much revenue it will earn the company no right Man, i wish we did Right? Is that, is that what we're working towards, I guess? That's, I, that is what I'm working towards. Sure. That's because here's the thing. The game is changing a little bit. It's changing right? a lot, yeah. You know, and, and, and we're looking at it. Talk, I was talking to Elizabeth about this the other day, right? You know, um, um, you know, you know Elizabeth even you know, mentioned here, we need, we need written processes to quickly train new talent to get someone in yep. that role you know, quickly. Absolutely we do, right? And I was talking to her about this the other day is, is how do you create better internal, even in, you know, um, sales systems mm. that spits out better quality, you know, handoff leads because, sure. because us, we can only chase for so long before you're like, holy shit, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, do you see yourself doing this for 10 years? Yeah. I did it for a long time. I, I, I still enjoy that. But if I had to go back in full-time production, I would probably be like, all right. There's got to be a better. There's sure. got to be a better mousetrap. That that kind of gets us onto the topic. Like, if we want to talk to uh, to Joe's comment, my two favorite systems I think that we that we run um, involve consistent lead flow and <clears throat> some in some ways helping spark new conversations uh, and follow up. Right. So, I think that our most valuable, excuse me, systems right now are the thing that keep making my watch go off as we're sitting here. Um, I think digital marketing is such a tremendous asset 
in in 2020 or beyond it will be it might look different in the future and it has looked different in the past um but we've been able to automate some incredible things with facebook ads and, and <coughs> google pay-per-click ads and not just generating them um but the retargeting systems have been really really great it's huge getting people to come who are, back who are you to using our site who we're using brian for son he's just been Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying time, it really is. Um, we both use Boomtown. We right? both use Boomtown. Boomtown has launched, supposedly launched an amazing we retargeting tool. We haven't used it I haven't yet, either. but I want to. I'm going to pour some money into it probably yeah. next month. Um, but we've really been able I mean, I'll just tell you right now, we're running Facebook lead ads at about $1.25 an ad for good contact information. Oh, they're just flying. And we're yeah. retargeting them like in, in a big, big way. And that's been really cool. Um but here's the, but the lead generation aspect of it is just one part of it. Like a lot of it, like Harvey's saying, right? it's very synergistic. <laughs> that's, whole, not what he's, <laughs> that's not what he's very saying. Synergistic. It's very synergistic. Oh my read gosh. above it. Read above yeah. it. What he oh, said. gotcha. Yeah, I mean, just like our hair is very <laughs> synergistic. Yeah, that's they very got Mike, twice as much as me. That's very Mike Reiner of you. I love <laughs> it, right? That was super Reiner of me to only get half of the point. I love <laughs> that it. That is good. Uh, no, but like, that, it, it's funny because when you talk about like your favorite system, the the business becomes interdependent, right? Like if we don't have great agents, then it doesn't matter how many leads we generate, right? Like they're not going to go anywhere, you know? And if we don't have great systems to get our agents trained up and stuff like that, then it doesn't matter. So like, I would say our training systems are just as fun or just fun. I, I think are just as valuable as any lead generation yep. systems. Right. And then we do use, uh, here's the thing. We use Boomtown for, for our automated follow-up, but we customize the hell out of it. It's plugged into MailChimp, bomb, bomb, bunch of other stuff. We have a lot of, uh, of smart trips and things like that. We've tested over and over and over again. I can't tell you how many Boomtown accounts we've blown up because we've got <laughs> our text message numbers have gotten <laughs> flagged for spam a million times. So there's been a lot of trial and error in that but my two favorite systems are what make the phone ring or is what, i mean it was what i say make the phone ring make make the notifications go off that we got new leads and then help our agents um augment our agents follow-up abilities to give them opportunities i think if we do that i mean to be honest the third one would be our our, our uh, whatever we have in place that i think is just coming from a place of me and matt working our asses off to find good talent Whatever our, our admins and ops director and all that stuff and VAs and everything that they've created on the back end, I mean, we are at a point in our business right now where we are so blessed to have some incredible people. I don't even know how all that shit got built out. All I know is that when something goes under contract, I just don't worry about it anymore. Yep. Yeah. And that, I, think, I think that's the biggest thing. And I, I want people to hear it, too. Like, Brian and I just recently were looking at our thing, and we realized, dude, we've got, I don't know, 16, 17 listings on the market, I think, in yeah. December. Guess what we didn't have? Any system for sign calls. Right? Like the yeah. sign calls are just going <laughs> to listing agents. I mean, like six of those listings are mine. I will tell you, sign calls don't get like picked uh, up every time when it rings my personal cell yeah. phone. We didn't have a system for that. Those are just all just opportunity dying on the vine yeah. all yeah. over the place, yeah. right? So there's always rooms for massive improvement, yeah. too. Yeah. When you start to scale your systems, is when you start to see all the holes in your other um, ones. Here's, here's what I'll tell you. That's I'm in the middle of revamping, and I can tell you right now I don't know which direction is up or down. <laughs> right. right? You know, I'm, I've even been looking and, and saying, is it worth the cost of Boomtown? Like, is there is there something? Because I look at the platforms and saying, if if the market starts turning in a direction that that we need to start cutting, well, I'm not. I don't really want to cut my website and yeah. my CRM. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. Do I, I'm going to either go back and renegotiate or look at something that's lower cost. And I hate to do that, yeah. but, but what would you cut first? You're going to cut typically your, your, your lower ROI on lead spin. Sure. So the ones that, that aren't making you the most money or costing you negative. Right. So you cut that. But if, if, if Boomtown's costing you X amount every month, and you need to really reduce your spend, you typically don't want to cut that program. Isn't your CRM kind of like rent or the mortgage though? That's isn't that the last thing to go? Because here's something that I think we can talk about personally, just have doing the show for a while, me knowing more about your business. You are like a CR a serial like dater when it comes to CRM. Yeah, how many times? Yeah. How much opportunity do you think? Here's the thing. Somebody it's, loses by a CRM. It's a logistical nightmare. It's gotta it be sucks. crazy. It sucks. But at what the do you same get time, out of it? I can't know because you the the technology is also adapting sure. and, and evolving and and I will tell you here's the thing I didn't want to leave Commissions Inc and I fell out of love with them because they told me to take my business elsewhere because they revamped their business right yeah. right they over I didn't want to leave that company 
right? Firepoint's so, supposed to be good. Yeah. yeah so you, so Harvey's if you them. have a company that changes their tools yeah. that was working, and now you've got a mm-hmm. Porsche payment and a Kia product, yeah. then you have to go and look. Yeah, if, the, if their product yes. changes, yes. sure. So I, I just feel like if, if, you, if you lose two transactions because you CRM jump, that's yeah, what your you CRM just, costs you yeah. all year long. No, yeah. but you have to look at what your ROI is from, from the opportunity. Here's the thing. Here's I what guess. I will tell you. CRM jumping also gets re-engagement back to your website. Okay. That is true. So I think it reignites the team as well. If you if you have a team of agents that you're running, it I just think of putting everybody them. on drips and recategorizing. Oh, dude, oh, logi- that's it's a logistical that's nightmare awful. for yeah. sure. No, no, no. But that's I want to jump up here for a second. So no, we we, we don't. Um, this is a miss on our a miss on our part right now, but we are working on it. We don't retarget with video content right now, but it's something that we do want to do in the future. What we're retargeting with right now is we usually segment like so. We, a lot of our Facebook ads come off our listings, and then the retargeting is if you click on a listing in a particular area, you'll get retargeted with ads for like all the open houses that are happening that weekend in that area or other listings that we have in that area or other listings that we have in that price range or something like that. So like you get retargeted with similar content and it works pretty well for us right now. But like, this is the, like we're, that's the great thing about digital marketing, especially is like, it just becomes infinite. There's so many ways that you can, you can do things and manipulate things. Um, and I think the best place to find follow up campaigns, like honestly, we started, I'll tell you this. We actually started doing this when we were both running a different CRM. Um, and I used to just use their stock follow-up campaigns. And then I literally just migrated all those over to Boomtown, combined them with some of the good Boomtown stuff. What you'll do is, like, schedule time out during the week. I usually do it on Monday mornings. And, like, I'll go in. This is how I did it with our expired text campaign. And, like, you just kind of look over time and, like, where people stop responding and, like, where you're getting, like, far enough down the rabbit hole that, like, you're losing people and stuff. So like I knew that like there was some emails um, that we'd send in our 10 days of pain that would like get great responses. And there's stuff that would never get responded to. So over a couple of months, I scrapped that, tried some different stuff. Same with text messages and stuff, too. I mean, Matt had a front row seat to me building out this expired text message campaign that took took us about half a year. But, like, you know, it it took us about half a year to get, like, to where it is now, which is really great. Like, we talked about 30 expireds a day. Mm -hmm. I don't mean, like, we import 30. I mean, like, we have 30 conversations, constructive conversations with expireds every single day. That happened because we just tried different stuff over and over. And, like, we'd be like, dude, like, Nobody's responding to text message number five yep. in the campaign. Like, or nobody's text message number two seems like it blew up our account because yep. as soon as that one went out, 50 people will flag that number. Everything back. shut down. Yeah. yeah. Like, and so, like, it's, it, there's no best practice for it. You do have to take some time to monitor kind of what's working and what's not working. And that's why it's really important, I think, to have a CRM where you can monitor in real time what which people are are responding to what i think that's really important and i think the the only reason i disagree with nick about the the crm hopping is because for a relationship-based agent like me and i this is how i train our agents sometimes too being able to go back and see the history of conversation yeah. and the original source of a lead from 18 months yep. ago it in the world where brian and i live where old leads are badass leads right like i love old leads yep. yeah right like so in that world, when I have Seasoned an ex- leads. exactly, and now our boomtown is two years old. Yeah. So every lead has two years, well, potentially two years worth right. of data in it, which allows you to go back, even if you're Joe, brand new agent, calling out of our Hopper account, yep. and you, all you can say is, "Hey, Brian, it's Matt Keller, machine. Don't remember me? We met in September of last year at yeah. an open house in Plano. Yeah. Did you end up finding a great house? <laughs> he does right? it all the time. I do that shit all the time. To people. That I wouldn't house. even do that open house. I saw it was an <laughs> open house in Plano a year <laughs> and a half ago, and that's what I think a really seasoned database allows you to do from a connection standpoint. Yeah, I think from our standpoint, like I can, I tell people all the time, I talked to them or met them, and I never did. Right? right. I don't look at notes. Right. Yeah. But I look at the way I look at and view systems now are completely changing because of how digital content is, is being changed. So sure. if I'm paying again, you know, I you guys get a, a, a lower cost just from the scalability of Boomtown, yep. right? But at the same time, if you could even get that lower, you can replace that same spin into more digital style content that opens up your pool to attract them in. That's where my my mindset's now going on a larger caliber caliber scale yep. of saying everything is going digital and going to to you know a a video style or I'm looking at this as a news network or television or radio style type capture. Sure. I mean relationships are right. started now by what you broadcast out there. Absolutely. Whether that's in the form like whatever your vessel is to get your content out there. And your platforms need to support that. Sure. 
Absolutely. 100%. And, and the platforms are behind on that. They're really behind on that. I don't think it's going to be too long before they, they figure out a way to, to like, the re- reality is, yeah, like a CRM, honestly, in this day and age, it'd be great if you could just start to integrate it with Facebook and stuff like that in a way where you're able to shoot video messages and, or go and, live, or go live through your CRM. And, and like, I'm sure all that stuff is coming in one way or another, but yeah, that's, that's so true. A follow up. And we, we, uh, we, we, we really hammer home with our team. Like you've got to be able, we've got to be creating content. You've got to be creating, you've got to be getting out there in front of your audience. Right. And everybody through that comes through your, your CRM, through your filter or through, your funnel is a potential person to be in your audience to see that broadcast now right like a lot of people are already doing that right like, or, uh, like there's some people that are already doing that right like like um like many chat and in chat bots yep. and stuff like that that are you can integrate through zapier with crms um it's not perfect because you can't always find everybody who puts their information in on social media like they use different information and stuff but like there's cool ways to take people that come through facebook lead ads um and get them into a many chat audience that you can broadcast stuff to. Like, there's some cool stuff coming yeah. on the pipe. It's going to be exciting to see what like the next you know, next couple of years have in that. In but that hopefully, way they they loosen it back up, right? So the many yeah, chat and everything. The privacy so thing it is used big. to be easier, right? We were doing Facebook Messenger broadcast, yeah. and then they changed it up to where it got a, a, a so so expensive that it wasn't worth it. And then it was, um, you know, I used to be able to look people by phone number or by email and could yeah. scrape it all. And then they stopped doing that. And then they've changed how you can even target your ads on on a lo- just Facebook and a lot of the other social media programs. So hopefully that they don't they loosen up that overcorrection. I feel like that tends to happen a lot. We kind of overcorrect with our privacy laws and stuff, and then we kind of like, okay, no one's going to die. Let's loosen them up a little bit. I think the text thing is going to get hammered because it's the easiest one. It's in writing. It's you just can yeah. prove it, right? Yeah. Like it's so easy to prove. You can't say you didn't do it. You can't really pull it back. That's why like we once it's out there, it's out there. Down. And it, I mean, we experienced it with, there was a situation yesterday where we got a call from, from somebody that one of the agents had been communicating with. And she was like, look, I just, she's like, I wasn't upset about the initial communication. I was upset about the continuing of it yep. after I asked her to just to kind of back off. Right. Yep. And, and through, and it was, an, it was an education process because I think it wasn't, the agent wasn't trying to do anything wrong. No, they just, I think that one specifically, if anybody ever asks you to stop contacting them, just God. leave them alone. I mean, We're not talking just, about the do not call. We're not talking about whether you should have or not in the first place. And from the second they ask you to stop, stop for a time maybe. Right? Sure. Like, I'm not saying you don't maybe call them six months from now and just check in or something. Right. Just like, say, hey, I just wanted to make sure that you wanted me to stop contacting Yeah, you. yeah. I was just calling to make sure <laughs> that you still, still wanted me right? to not call. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, know. That actually, I wonder if that would work. I'm going to start testing that out. Look, I'm not going to say I've never had somebody like – it's a super big gray area, but I've absolutely been yelled at by people and been like, stop calling me, son of a bitch, right? And they hang up, and it's like, but I had a conversation with you two weeks ago, and we were fine. Yeah. I'm probably going to call that guy and be like, hey, I think I caught you on the wrong day last yeah. time, man. Like, if you yeah. calm down, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. no, I always say I think I caught you at the wrong time. It's a way of me acknowledging that you were a dick without calling you one. Right. Well, if you go join our <laughs> Facebook group, the only real estate group worth being a part of. Yeah. We're starting, I think the group is actually just starting to be like, how, how many messages can we have that's just so screwy? It's making me nervous because I don't want to take it too far. Every once in a while you can poke and run, yeah. but like don't. <laughs> don't go Like there's somebody far. in our market the other day who posted like an eight-page <laughs> screenshot of this ridiculous conversation he was having. Or, so or what dumb. you put on Facebook will come can come back and Dude, just start fights. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not a, nobody would hear that though any, anymore now. Yeah, yeah. No. they wouldn't hear. And one, I need to remember that for August of 2020, Matt. We penned at seven deals in the last eight days, so it's been a good. Start. We did, and we got another one. We ain't put on the board yet. It just came in, so it's like there's just it, it's whatever, and it's not like the market's taken off or whatever. in different markets. I'm just saying like. I don't know what's going on in real estate right now, but people are still super interested in buying and selling, and the competent agents are still taking business. It's funny when you, yeah, you put you hit the nail on the head. Like you know. people are like, "What's what's the market like right now?" I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You tell me. This seems fine. No, it's it's look this this year is going to be fine. Yes, right. Unless we go to war with Iran. <laughs> three minutes. You couldn't just wait three more <laughs> damn minutes. <laughs> Which. There's a good possibility that could happen. Fine regardless. I, God, I don't know if I should. Brian and I recorded our podcast today, which is, I will tell you guys, is way yeah. off the rails, okay? Yeah. It is not safe for work. Yeah. If you'd like to think of Brian and I as like these just nice, cute little boys, don't go listen to the other show. 
Can I participate in that one? Dude, we Dude, need I'm to so, have you we, on. We, you, absolutely, first off, <laughs> yes. But that topic came up today, and I just will say I fundamentally do not believe that we have to worry about it too much. I don't think we do either. I want to reply directly to this, Aaron Foster, before we get out of here. I agree with you. I also What think, are you replying to? So it says uh, we're talking about online reviews and stuff like that. That's super true. Like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that stuff. Any, like, don't ever poke people into giving you bad reviews. This is a Malcolm Gladwell-esque tipping point, though, that we're at with online reviews, yeah. though, dude. Everybody, like, you people, remember how seriously people used to take Yelp reviews? Everybody knows Yelp's a joke now. Yeah. It's like Google reviews, Facebook reviews, stuff like that. Um, but even though it's like you can take stuff down sometimes and sometimes you can't, but, like, everybody, like, we were just talking about this the other day. Yeah. Like, I only read three-and-a-half-star reviews. I only read one star reviews. See, I don't do it. I think those are the extremes. Just everybody five star reviews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every five star review is probably better than it actually is. Every one star review is a Karen. Here's why I read the one star because more than likely that it's so over the top that I know that typically oh, that's, for that's the exception purposes, to the rule. Sure. Absolutely. I, if you ever read a one star review for a restaurant, it is usually about some waitress or something. <laughs> and you're just like, well, what if I don't get that waitress? Like, how is the food? Like, outside of the waitress. What was the rest of your experience like? Because I might not have that same experience, right? Like, I only read three and a half star reviews because they're going to give you the good and the bad. Yep. And I appreciate you taking the time to leave a medium review. Yep. <laughs> Most people just leave reviews when they're just hot. Dude, they're if just you're mad. leaving a one star review, you are so twisted off. You had to take to the internet and let the world know. And that is a mind frame. That's a mind. Here's the deal: when I'm super pissed off. I just don't even want to talk about it. I've just never, I've never, yeah, I've never felt compelled to be like, you are getting canceled. There's a local yeah. hibachi place I went to this weekend, and they sat us, but then they were like, oh, no, we meant to seat these other people, and they made us <laughs> they get made up. They made you get up? Bro, I lit that guy up like Christmas. I was like, you're <laughs> such an asshole. There was a cop who stood at the front door. I was like, you need to come over and be present for this conversation because yeah. this is about to get out of control. <laughs> but you didn't leave a review. No, I'd left the restaurant went somewhere else. See, that's what I would do, too. <laughs> as soon hungry, as it's bro. over, I would just, I just let hungry. it be over. We were hungry, bro. That's, that gives me an idea. Uh-oh. Hey. We ready? Wait a minute. Do we have something for 2020? And now, Brian Forces, billionaire uh, movie uh, <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, yeah. It exists. I just want to flesh this one out together. I don't even have... This is just... <laughs> gay. I want to start leaving one-star reviews for my enemies, but they're all going to be so obviously over the top and fake. <laughs> and I'm going to go... So, I'm going to do it all on Facebook because you can comment directly to the review. <laughs> and I'm going to just... I'm going to do like... So, a uh, Hibachi restaurant. Fantastic. You How do you say it? <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> Hibachi. Hibachi. <laughs> wow. Hibachi restaurant. If you ever tell me to get up from my seat at a hibachi restaurant again, <laughs> I'm going to leave a one-star review for you. Except it's going to have nothing to do, nothing to do with you making me get up from my seat. <laughs> I'm going to give you the most over-the-top review. I'm going to be like the middle of the meal. The hibachi man lost his knife <laughs> and it stabbed my wife in the shoulder. <laughs> he didn't flip we the had uh, shrimp tail yeah, high we enough. Had to go straight to the hospital. She's still on life support. The two and only the eye. But the, the food tail. tastes great. Yeah. Yeah. But and it's great. Comment food. back, and we'll be like, "We're so sorry about your wife." I'll be like, "Sorry is not good enough." Here's a picture of her. <laughs> <laughs> like, take, just find a B-roll image of somebody in the hospital. I'll be like, She's, these are final days now <laughs> because of your stupid <laughs> hibachi cook who can't control his utensils. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> just random. And, I'll just, and if they call me out, I'm going to be super, super obstinate, right? I'm going to be like this. They'll be like, sir, there were no reports. We watched all the security footage. No one got stabbed in our restaurant. And I'll fire back. I'll be like, now you're gaslighting me. And I got so (laughs) mad, I stabbed someone else. And I'll send another picture of someone else who stabbed in the hospital. I'll be like, how long do you want this suffering to go on, hibachi restaurant? Brian's ideas escalate to violence so rapidly every time. (laughs) And I'll never let up. If you cancel my account, I'll start a new one. And I'll be like, now I stabbed someone from Facebook. And I'll send another (laughs) picture. And I'll be like, this ends when you want it to end. Just give me a <laughs> refund. <laughs> like, I won't even want anything. It's just over a refund. I just, just want a steak and yeah. scallop. Yeah. I'll be like, I want a gift card. And that's I'll, my f- <laughs> I'll take it. 
That's my favorite hibachi. <laughs> and then if they give me a gift Is card, it? I'll leave a comment and be like, thanks for the gift card. I, I think kidding. hibachi is so overrated. I love it. I think it's the it's most just food, overrated right? food. Whenever the guy does the train with the onions, I'm like a little kid. <laughs> yeah. This might be the least <laughs> cultured thing I've ever said, but isn't hibachi sort of just very showy Chinese food or Japanese food? It's a lot of fried rice, right? Oh, yeah, yes. there's fried yep. rice. And yeah. I would, like I said, I get steak and scallops and yeah. sometimes throw a little lobster. Just sort of, that's what fancy. I get from Howard Wings when I order. It's just yeah. a dude doesn't come to my house and flip a bunch of shit in the air. That's why it's not as and awesome. light my coffee table on fire. Yeah. How cool. That's a billionaire idea. Delivery hibachi, <laughs> Derek. It's going to cost home, a bunch more. Home call yeah. chef. You got to <laughs> have, you have to have a, 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 an eating thing that you don't care if it gets caught on fire. <laughs> But a dude comes to your house with a hat on <laughs> and, eating and everything, thing. and he just sprays a bunch of lighter fluid on your fucking dining table <laughs> and lights it on fire. I'm sure, that would taste great. <laughs> and just starts <laughs> whipping it up right there. Oh, man, that'd be fun. And then he puts it out, and he gives you a cookie, and he leaves. The oh, cookie's a fortune cookie. cookie. Nice. Do they do that at hibachi restaurants? I'm mixing so many I Asian know, usually, cultures I've together right now. I kind of think that I'm being super offensive to di- groups, different groups of people. I don't mean to be. It's usually just, best to eject at this point. I can't. Yeah. It's just that we Americanize so much of our food anyway. It kind of I all. It's still going. It's you, all. You can't stop I it. I think everything we do <laughs> Asian food wise over here is offensive. It's like a train with like Chinese zero food's breaks. not really like that in China. And I kind of feel like they resent us for it. And they should. Derek, get us the hell out of here. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.